Leaders and healers, gamers and claimers, ladies and gentlemen from around the universe, from around the globe, from around the community, welcome to the Power, Purpose, and Passion Podcast 2.0. I'm your host, Anthony Chi, speaker, life coach, author, trainer, musician, singer, songwriter, ready to give to you the best of what I've learned and earned and ready to yearn to give it back and return to you in love and care for the greatest version of yourself so you can upgrade, update, advance, and enhance your life to the furthest farthest, widest, deepest life possible so that you can live powerfully, purposely, and passionately and impact the many people around you that you care about, living purposefully, living with vision, living with mission, living with depth, living with humility and care at the same time with total strength and courage about not only about who you are, but what you were made to do on this planet. And that is my mission, my vision, and I'm totally renewed. I'm totally reinforced. I'm re-energized to do that with greater love, with greater precision, greater authenticity and generosity. So thank you. So thank you for joining us on this podcast. It is an absolute pleasure and a privilege to to guide you, to give to you um, on this podcast, and send to you the love that I have for who you are, for tuning in, for taking time to tune in, whether it be passively or actively at home, at the gym, in your car, wherever it might be. And I'm just here for you. And today's podcast, um, and before I do that, I want to introduce again my power partner who's been so patient with me over the past few months, uh, Cameron Dubay. What's going on from Chatham? You still there, man? Hey, yes, I am. Time really does fly. It does not feel like it's been... uh well, like a hundred days over like, like a crazy long time. Yes, 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 yes. I missed it. I, I did miss it. I did miss it. And, and you know what? It, I, I, I didn't, I didn't see it as a failure or as a time to go, Oh my gosh. And grovel in it. Oh, I haven't been on the podcast. It was more a time of a reflection, re-examination, uh, a time to step away and, and to listen to God's voice, uh, speaking through me to meditate, to pray. I stuck to fundamentals. I stuck to my my health program. Um, I mean, obviously, we moved about back in January. Uh, we had a lot of things going on, but you know, I'm back. We're almost settled into our new house, and we're so blessed to have this brand new home. Um, but I have a renewed sense of f- uh, purpose, strength, um, and just this yearning every single morning before I go to sleep. It's almost a timeless sort of feeling, uh, sensation in my mind, in my body, and in, in my soul that that is. It's it. I'm not pushing myself to go get motivated. It's it's it. It itself is pulling me. And as Khalil Gibran said in his book, The Prophet, he's, and I remember the, reading his book, the very first the the sort of the preface of the first chapter, and he said, while I was writing the prophet, the prophet was writing me. And I almost feel like that right now. I'm not doing this podcast. The podcast is doing the things through me, and I feel like I am actually on a massive journey to create massive transformation, to live out my mission 2.0, 3.0, double it, triple it, quadruple it, five times it, 10 x it, 100 x it, whatever it, might, whatever it means, to create tons of abundance in people's lives. I really, I'm at another level right now, I really do. And it's, it's humbled me. I have a whole lot more certainty about my life, a lot more certainty about what I'm meant to do on this planet. And that's why I'm doing this now with podcasts, with seminars, workshops, speaking, uh, writing, uh, my coaching practice, my, my, my training practice, whatever I'm doing, every interaction is a blessing, a divine union where I can then practice humility and care and compassion for people. So that's really been the past 100, day, 100 days of, of me examining my life and reinforcing certain things and principles and practice and I feel like I'm on another level. So um, what about yourself, Cam? How have the past few months been? Well, man, first of all, congratulations. Glad Thank you're you. on another level. That's really nice to hear. Thank um, you, man. My pleasure. That's awesome. I'm, I've been doing great. I often think that, uh, I often think to myself that this time away is part of the process, you know? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. like as a musician or as a songwriter, um, I'm sure if you're a songwriter, if anybody out there is a songwriter, you would also relate. Um, going through life itself, having trials and tribulations and problems and yes, yes, overthinking and dark nights or happy nights, whatever, they're all part of your songwriting process. You mm-hmm. have to go through these things yeah. to have something to sing about. Yeah. So yeah. when it comes to uh, you know the movie I want to make or the song I want to write or whatever it is, the passion I want to cultivate, um, it needs to come out of experience and facing these thoughts and, uh, working on myself and, uh, deepening my practice. And I've been just doing that. Like on paper, it doesn't look like I've accomplished much. But yes. When you, yes. Uh, I know a lot of people who haven't seen me in a little while and they'll, they'll come mm-hmm. back and say, wow, like you've, 
Like mm. a completely different person. Um, yeah. I could yeah. say, oh, that's because of the exercise. I've been exercising yeah. regularly for the yeah. last uh, four months, five months now. Yeah. Um, could be that. Could be a ton of things. But yeah, yeah. Overall, I've just been uh, doing just that, taking my time, and yeah, it's been good. It's been good. good. And I, I also Excellent. feel like completely fresh, like having, having <laughs> taken good. that time. Like it's good. it's beautiful good. what. Uh, what just time consistency taking yeah. it day by day going yeah. uh and staying aware can do you know yes yes amen brother and you know what with the amount of scarcity that's in this world right now with the whole uh the volatility of the of the of the health of the world the coronavirus the stock markets plunging going up and down people's fears are at an all-time high and if we are going to make a shift collectively, we're going to have to make shifts individually. And I, did, I, I really recently this morning put out a video on Instagram and, and, and Facebook. Uh, I entitled the, the video. It's only about a minute, 20 seconds. If you haven't heard it, you're going to hear more in depth about what I mean by the coronavirus. Is it a problem or is it an opportunity? And let me tell you something. What is scarce in this world? What is fearful? What is wrong with this world is always available. It's always available, but so is what's right. So is what's bountiful. So is what's loving. So is what's amazing in your life. And and part of that is reshifting your focus from, oh my God, the coronavirus is the most horrible thing in the world to how can I use the coronavirus and the scarcity in the world so that I really focus in on what's really important in my life so it can amplify who I am, who I show up as. And so I create greater amounts of love and abundance for everyone around me and my interactions become more present, more fulfilling, more deep and more expansive. And so what, that's what I've done. I've used it as an opportunity to grow. I've used it as an opportunity to look at my wife with greater love and greater divinity with inside myself to connect with my children. To, to When I'm cuddling with my children at night, let me tell you something, I'm cuddling them full out. I am with them. Like I imagine if it was the last time I was gonna see them and man, when I hold them, I, 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 I kiss them, I hug them, I do everything. I, it is with total letting go of fears, doubts, the uncertainties of the world, the scarcity of the world right now, the coronavirus. And, and by the way, the coronavirus, by the way, and I was, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a doctor and, and he's a medical, medically trained doctor. And we, we were having deep conversations about this from a scientific point of view. Every year there is a pandemic. It's called the flu, the basic flu every year. There's different strains. Thousands and thousands of people die of this coronavirus, but no one ever talks about the flu every year and making it a pandemic. Now, I'm not saying not to be cautious and to clean your hands and to all these things. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is don't give in to the fear and the panic and the terror. That's when you start to invite dis-ease in your body. And there is a saying that says a coward dies a thousand times, a, courage, a courageous man dies but once. And to me that says, if you start thinking and focusing and putting your attention on what could go wrong or imagine getting the coronavirus or imagine the whole world is about to go belly up and Armageddon's coming, let me tell you, your brain is convinced that it's already happened. So you're gonna keep on reliving that reality over and over and over and over again. Armageddon doesn't have to physically happen. You're already doing it inside your mind. The mind is in of, of itself and can make a hell of heaven and a heaven of hell, as Milton's work says in Paradise Lost. And I can tell you right now, you can take virtually any situation in your life, I don't care what it is, and, and either turn it turn an opportunity into a problem or a problem into an opportunity. Winston Churchill, I believe, I'm not sure if he was the original person that said this, but he said... Uh, opt uh, a pessimist can turn an opportunity into a calamity. A optimist can turn an, uh, a, pes uh, a calamity into an opportunity. So, are you turning calamities into opportunities, or opportunities into calamities? And part of a part of maturity, part of owning your owning yourself and claiming your power, clarifying your purpose, and cultivating your deepest, widest, and highest passions possible, is understand claiming that power to choose what you focus on daily, and taking your attention and focusing on what it is you want, not what you fear. If you focus on coronavirus and you read everything you can about the coronavirus, is that going to empower your life or is that going to disempower your life? Or are you focusing on how can I be the best, most loving, healthiest, loving instrument that I possibly can be so that my immune system is so strong so that even if I do contract the, 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 the virus, my body's ready to actually get rid of it.
And I was even talking to this medical doctor. He said, you know, the chances of mortality in a healthy human being um, is is very, very, very like like 0.02%. I get no, don't know the exact number, but it's very, 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 very low. Um, and, and as I said, I'm not saying don't be cautious, but what I'm saying is in this moment now, you can either choose to read about the coronavirus or you can choose to go like, okay, I can't control the coronavirus, but I can control my own thoughts or what I do, the thoughts I dwell on, or I can th- control what I do. I can control, control where I put in my attention in terms of what I'm grateful for. I can control in terms of my exercise, what I'm putting inside my body for fuel, what I'm putting inside my mind, rather than read all the stuff about coronavirus, why not read a book like Think and Grow Rich and it'll transform and change your life? Why not read about um, how beautiful the world is or write a hundred things down that you're grateful for? Or why not, why not use the coronavirus as an opportunity to pray even deeper for the people who are really suffering in the world? Because at the end of the day, you know, there's, I remember when I first started this journey of the self-help journey, reading books and going to seminars. And the one book I read was um, uh, The Magic of Thinking Big. And I think it was in that book. It talked about how, you know, I used to worry about how worn my shoes were until I met a man or woman with no feet. You could always find a way to shift, shift your thinking, shift your perception onto what is good rather than what is bad. What you fear is always present. It's always present. You can, you can, you can sit there and contemplate and, and envision and magnify this thought about being afraid to get in a car accident or lose your job or whatever it might be. You know, and I remember hearing even an audio, Les Brown, great motivational speaker, if you've never heard his stuff, he's, a, he's extraordinary, this guy. And he talked about how his mentor, you know, I guess there was a recession back in the day and he would tell his mentor, oh, I, we have to, we have to, um, we have to cut expenses or we have to lower our expenses. He said, are you going to lower your expenses or are you going to create more value in the world or expand your value into the world or create more wealth, create more value into the world? And he, his mentor used to say that, are you going to shrink into greatness or are you going to expand into it? Rather than reduce your expenses, create more value. And then that year, they, they, they made more money than any other year, even in a recession, even in tough economic times. So you can either reduce your expenses or you can expand yourself in this. Use this as an opportunity to expand, create more value and more certainty inside yourself, the internal certainty that you can give regardless of external circumstances, economic circumstances, economic circumstances, whatever it might be. You have the power to do so. And part of claim your power is choosing. And again, the key word here is choice. Choosing what you put your attention on. Choosing what you focus in on. And part of doing that, one of the practices that I use is using power questions. What questions do you consistently ask yourself on a daily basis? Are you asking yourself, what's wrong with me? Or are you asking yourself, how can I be of greatest service today? This morning, I was asking myself these questions. How may I serve? How can I use these fears of coronavirus so I can amplify who I am and make a bit bit bigger impact on the world around me? How can I use this so I can deepen my awareness, deepen my compassion, deepen my love for people? How can I use this to be even healthier, to, to be more focused and driven and more purposeful in my mission? So I'm using it rather than allowing it to use me and to create more fear and panic and terror in my life. And, and the one thing I will tell you as, as you know, this coronavirus, yeah, it, you know, it's on every news network. And guess who's profiting from this? These news media, right? They're making a ton of money off of it. They just love it. With the United States, with Donald Trump and Joe Biden, everyone's watching, oh my gosh, Donald Trump versus Joe. Oh my gosh, it's uncertainty, the economic times. Oh my gosh, there's no reason to be optimistic. This is the most reason to be optimistic. Use this as an opportunity. Okay, where is an opportunity for me to grow here? And you know, I use this metaphor back in the 1920s during the depression, more, there were more millionaires made in that time of depression than any other time in history. How is that possible? Because they saw it as an opportunity, not as a detriment, not as, oh my gosh, the world is, is, is going to crap. They saw it as an opportunity. So where's the opportunity? Just find the opportunities to create more value, to be a better person, to love more, to give more, to pray more, to sit in silence more, and just to connect with that divine person that you are. You are perfect in who you are connect with that and then express it, actualize it, and then expand it in everything that you do, everything that you desire, everything that you live for. Do it with power, purpose, and passion. And I hope you really get that message today. This is what I'm going to tell you right now, guys, as we end this podcast show. I'm going to be on this 
at least once a week, doing maybe one, two podcasts a week. We hope you tune in. This is the same sort of, I got a new camera. I got new lights. I got a new house, man. I've just, I listen, I want to give more. I want to love more. So if you have any issues in your life, send me questions, fire them off on Instagram, reach out to me through email, whatever it might be. If you have any problems, I will make it, I will make a certain podcast that question and I will answer it in that podcast. Cause I want to make this not just about setting principles and practices and talking about certain things. I want to take everyday problems that you, the listeners are, are, are enduring and going through and then being able to weekly, daily, monthly tackle those problems, turn them into opportunities, shift them so they can elevate and enhance your life. So that is my purpose here. And I am, I am more driven to actually create massive change in this environment. It starts with individuals like you, individuals like me, individuals like Cam, individuals who are willing to, to humble themselves to these, this type of learning and this type of material. So to your continued upgrade and evolution, we will see you guys again, and I'm going to be consistent, ready to give to you the best of who I am and the best of this world. Queen, thank you so much. Thank you for all the people that joined, all these other people that made all these other comments. Thank you. Queen is so happy. I'm so glad that you have joined in after 100 days or three months. Uh, it's such a pleasure and a privilege to serve everyone on Instagram, everyone uh, listening to this on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and every other platform. God bless you guys to your continued upgrade and evolution. Live it up with power, purpose, and passion. God bless you guys. Have an amazing, wild Wednesday. Take care.